and for their key leadership on what I believe, what we all believe, is a critical issue for the 21st century. Social Security is perhaps the most enduring domestic program enacted, certainly in the last 100 years, and perhaps in American history. I believe that for one simple reason, earned security. It, Social Security says that if you work hard in this country, you'll be insured against the insecurities that any of us could encounter, like poverty and old age or disability during your working career. In the 21st century, we should recognize that we have new sources of insecurity and an even more fundamental risk, which is financial insecurity when you start a family. Working parents today are often trapped in a series of no-win situations. You have to choose to have one parent stay at home and you can't afford the house close to your place of work or possibly can't afford to buy a home for your family at all. Have both parents work and watch child care costs cancel out most of at least one of your two incomes. Take time off from work right after having a new child only to spend less time with them for the rest of their childhood because you need a second job to pay off the debt from your unpaid parental leave. So today we are proposing a change to Social Security to apply it to the challenges of our time. Our proposal would let new parents pull forward a portion of their Social Security benefits for one, two, or three months of paid parental leave after the birth or adoption of a child. In exchange, parents can either choose to delay their retirement by about six months per child, or they have the option of receiving a reduced Social Security benefit during the first five years of retirement at an equal size. For example, the projected normal retirement age increase would be, under current conditions, two months for every one month of paid leave uh, benefit, uh, the paid leave benefit amount taken. That's about 1% of future Social Security benefit. And again, it's an option. No one would be required to do this. Consider the example of two parents, one an electrician, the other a teacher. They both earn the national median income for their jobs, about $40,000 per year. Under the plan we're proposing today, if one parent took two weeks off from work at 100% of his or her income, then the other parent could afford to take two months off at 120% of their income, or three months off at 80% of their income. Importantly, our proposal offers maximum flexibility so that families can determine what type of leave works best for them. Under our proposal, the benefit would be transferable between the parents in the household and available to working and stay-at-home moms and dads alike. Our proposal would enact paid family leave in America without increasing taxes, without placing new mandates on small businesses, which would harm young working parents we aim to help. We hope this plan will help advance the cause of pro-family and pro-worker reforms, and we urge our colleagues to consider it. Thank you. Uh, I'll turn it over to Senator Romney and Congressman Wagner. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Rubio. It's an honor to be here today. Um, there are two states in the country where the number of births actually exceed the number of deaths, where the population rises in this, the state even without any move-ins. One of those states is Utah. We have a lot of kids in Utah. People are having babies in Utah. And as I talk to people across our state, one of the things I hear time and again is how difficult it is economically to make ends meet, particularly when the child comes home from the hospital, when mom or dad has to leave work, often an unpaid leave, and be able to provide for that little child. And so this piece of legislation allows something to happen that will help ease that burden. And that is by pulling forward some social security benefits from when they're going to be uh, much older to the time when they need them as this child comes home. They're able to meet their financial needs during the time of uh, unpaid leave from their work and receive instead this social security benefit uh, at such a critical time. That's paid back later in life. One of the things I like about this is not only that it helps the, these young families that are having children, but also it's something that doesn't add to the national debt. We're not borrowing more money. It also doesn't raise taxes on the American taxpayer. We're not raising taxes to do this. This is something entirely based upon the principle of personal responsibility, where people are able to bring forward Social Security benefits at a time when they really need them, when a young child is coming home from the hospital. So I'm happy to be part of the sponsorship of this great piece of work. I appreciate the Congress people and the Senator for having uh, worked so diligently uh, over many, many months to pull this together. And I believe this will be a real plus for the people in my state and for men and women across our country. Thank you. Congresswoman. Thank you. Wonderful to be here today. 
Uh, this is a day I've been waiting for for a long time. Paid parental leave is an issue that is absolutely near and dear to my heart. Uh, as a mother, uh, a grandmother, uh, as someone who's employed many, many new moms and dads, I know that having uh, a child is both a joyous time but a, a time of challenge also. The last thing a new parent should have to worry about is her job. New parents need more flexibility to focus on caring for their children. But sadly, many Americans do have to worry about whether they're going to be able to balance staying in the workforce and caring for their child. We are the only, the only industrialized country that does not offer guaranteed paid family leave. It's obvious to me that Congress must act, which is why I stood up and shouted yes at, the president, at President Trump's State of the Union address when he advocated for paid parental leave. We now have a Republican White House willing to work with us on a conservative and responsible solution. And I'm grateful that we are having such a robust conversation on how best to support our families. With the rising costs of living and child care, it can be difficult to grow your family. The New Parents Act lets individual workers make this financial planning decision for themselves. American families and workplaces have grown more diverse and versatile. Today, women make up almost half of the American workforce, and two-thirds of families have dual income and share child care responsibilities. We need a flexible paid leave policy that's designed, as in the words of Senator uh, Rubio, for the 21st century workforce. Research shows that women who have paid leave benefits are more likely to return to work and work more hours per week after having a child. This plan would re require no new taxes or mandates, meaning it would not discourage work or job creation. It allows young moms and dads to take what I call an advance on their own Social Security benefits to help them during this exciting time. Over the past year, we have worked hand in hand drafting this legislation with the Social Security Administration uh, Chief Actuary to ensure that this bill does not affect current or future earned benefits and also maintains the solvency of the Social Security Trust Fund. At their retirement, workers who voluntarily choose to take this option will repay any parental, parent, uh, parental benefits received through a temporary benefits reduction or a delay in retirement to offset the costs. They can also pay back uh, at, a, at a future time. Uh, I could take this benefit at 25, 27. I could pay it back when I was 50 or 56, maybe more financially uh, stable. So they have three options there. It gives new parents choices for how best to keep their role in the workplace while still having time to care for their new child. Our legislation will expand freedom and flexibility and make parenthood more affordable, but most importantly, it will give America's children more time with their parents during one of life's most precious and exceptional moments. This proposal is a win-win. It is a win for women, for families, employers, employees, as well as the economy and the job market. Senator Romney, Senator Rubio, and Congressman Crenshaw have been wonderful partners on this issue, and they recognize how important it is to find a workable solution to the issue of paid parental leave. We believe that this is, again, a conservative, responsible solution that will best help our next generation of working parents without overburdening our government or employers. I appreciate working with each of them on this important issue, and I'm so, so pleased to have a gentleman from, uh, from Texas, uh, Congressman Crenshaw, uh, one of our, our new freshman members who has uh, uh, so avidly jumped onto this legislation and been a, a tremendous partner. So, Congressman Crenshaw, all yours. Thank you, Congresswoman Wagner. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Senator Rubio. Thank you, Senator Romney. Um, and uh, I also want to recognize that we've had a great partner in the Trump administration. I want to thank them for making this a priority as well. Needless to say, I am very proud to be part of this effort. Everything starts with the family. A strong family unit is the backbone of a strong society. And so the question always becomes, how can we invest in paid family leave programs that recognize that value without creating yet another burdensome government program. That is what this bill is about. Rarely do we have the opportunity to offer a significant benefit to hardworking families in a fiscally responsible way. 
This bill gives young American families early, temporary access to future funds at a time when they need it the most. It is creative, it is innovative, and unlike many other proposals, it's actually feasible. What makes this opportunity even better is that there is no long-term impact on our budget. This is a fiscally responsible way to provide a paid family leave benefit. Because the last thing we want to do is promise more benefits to young people that our future generations will have to pay off. There is already too much of that in Washington. It's how politicians get elected. After all, it, it, or said, after all, this solution doesn't make false promises. By allowing families to decide how best to use their benefits, we're offering an option that would change lives and encourage young parents to start a family without having to worry about their finances when they are most vulnerable and when their newborns so desperately need the attention of their parents. Republican policies are pro-family, and this bill is building upon that agenda. We've already given hardworking families a better job market, not just the regulatory relief, but also through the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, where we not only created a booming economy, but also doubled the child tax credit. We are the party that advocates for a sustainable future, one where we don't make promises that we can't keep. We are the party that is built around the idea that you know best what to do with your money, your time, and your freedoms. We don't believe that we can pay for government programs with just good intentions alone. When you believe that the that business is the enemy of success and should be, or the business is the enemy and success should be punished instead of valued, you destroy our job market. Other policies on the other side of the aisle do just that and they hurt the financial future of our country. That's why I so emphatically support this bill, because it's a chance to do the right thing in a fiscally conservative way. I'm also supporting this bill because I know the people that it will help the most. It is my generation a generation of millennials that are starting their families and want flexible solutions to make that journey easier. When I talk to young people, people my age, about starting families, they have concerns, concerns about time off of work and their financial ability to take care of their kids. Providing this highly flexible option ensures that time off from work no longer has to be the main focus of these conversations for families across the country. Families are being forced to choose between their financial well-being and the well-being of their child. That's a horrific situation, and this legislation would ensure that the answer is not a binary choice. Numerous studies indicate that health of newborns is directly correlated to parents being present. The New Parents Act prioritizes the health of newborns and the financial futures of families. I'm so proud to be supporting it, and I look forward to turning this into law as soon as possible. The American family should not have to wait any longer. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes, sir. There are, um, there's a, a, another bill in the Senate sponsored by Senator McGee and uh, Ernst, somewhat similar in terms of holding Trump's social security and sort of advance. Um, why not work with them on the same bill? How does this differ yeah. from their and, and their bill is very good and very similar. As you said, there's some differences, which is the reason why they chose a, a different path on the, the, the transferability of the benefit to both parents as opposed to having it to, to some benefit that could be allocated between the parents. Uh, it's pro the primary difference in it. And, um, and we felt strongly that that was important because it allows you the flexibility, as I outlined in my example, of having one parent take leave first uh, at 80 percent of the benefit and then the second parent take it leave at 120 percent of the benefit. So we just want to provide this whole thing is an option, right? No American is going to be forced to take anything out of Social Security. It is an option that is available to them that they do not have now. And within that option, we wanted to create additional options for how they wanted to allocate the benefits. So that is the primary difference. But, uh, but their proposal is, is, is a good one. And I, and I would anticipate that even when we get momentum on this, and I believe we can and will, that we'll be partnered with them at sort of finding the final uh, way to approach it. And if I could, the flexibility is what's, what's, what's key here. Uh, our plan uh, allows a, a parent to a new parent to work with their employer to maybe come up with the best flexible work plan. Maybe they want to take the first month home with their child, but maybe in the second month they want to work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or, or Tuesday, Thursday, or some kind of a part-time uh, um, option. We're allowing the, the maximum amount of flexibility for what's, what's good for an employer, what's good for the employee and the new mom um, and dad. So. But I also uh, agree it's a, it's a, a, a great, great plan. When you introduced sure. this last year, you said you were, you were going to seek um, bipartisan support for it. Have you, and if you haven't, doesn't this make it a real uphill up battle? I have. I always seek bipartisan support, and I am in 
con um, conversations with uh, uh, two Democrat members of the House, I can say, that uh, one in particular is very, very uh, interested. And I will continue to do this. I, we've just rolled this out. We've been working on this since the summer to, to come to some level of, of harmonization. And um, now it's time to, to, to pick up uh, uh, co-sponsors. Generally, the people that work on the legislation are the first to jump on. I am in consultation with uh, Democrats in the House. And I, I see this as a bipartisan option. And, and can I follow on that? Mm -hmm. um, some, some people say that what you're doing is opening Social Security to other areas, too. <laughs> Like, for instance, if you wanted to pay for college for your kid, could you cap into Social Security? What do you say to that, that you're sort of going after this sacrosanct? No, this is very, very narrow, um, obviously, and it's, it's, late, it's uh, initiated specifically for paid family leave. And let me stress also that I see this as a 21st century solution for something that we're the only industrialized country that does not uh, offer benefits like this. Uh, uh, really, I think the numbers are only one in ten Americans actually have access to paid family leave, and I find that uh, uh, to be uh, very disappointing. And uh, we want to make sure, however, that we are not doing anything to the solvency of Social Security and the trust fund or affecting any current or future retirees' benefits. This is an advance on their own Social Security. And they, there are certain guidelines. They'll have to have a little skin in the game, Chuck. They'll have to uh, have worked anywhere from 8 to 12 quarters uh, in order to draw back. We've been very fiscally responsible in, uh, in this uh, proposal. So. Well, let me start. The, the, the three months is basically because we wanted to stay consistent with the existing law on, on um, the ability to take uh, leave from work, uh, uh, obviously without the requirement of compensation. So that's already been built in to our uh, systems, and, and businesses have already grown accustomed to that requirement. And so trying to stay consistent with that would be less disruptive. I don't understand the argument that this gives parents a bad option. But right now they have no options. Um, basically, if many people, uh, I, most Americans cannot afford to go two weeks without a paycheck, three weeks without a paycheck, much less three months. And their only other option is to either A, not have children, or B, uh, go on public assistance or run up huge amounts of debt. So everyone will have a choice to make, and they'll have to examine it and decide whether it makes sense for them or not. And uh, as far as um, whether it should become something that's broadly accepted, uh, th this does nothing to impede the private sector's ability to provide this benefit to their employees. The irony is if you make $800,000 a year on Wall Street, you have it. If you make $40,000 a year somewhere else, you probably do not. So it's the people who need it the most that are least, least likely to have it. But ultimately, our job here is to make things better. And I would say that some people may choose not to take this option, but it is certainly better than having no option at all, which is what they have today. And, um, and so uh, in our view, it makes things better than it is now. I know there's a third conservative bill coming from um, Senator Bill Cassidy. At this point, do you know what some of the differences are that he might introduce? No, I don't, but I do think it's good that we now have at least three separate groups working on paid family leave within the Republican Party. This was an issue that five years ago was not discussed as part of Republican orthodoxy. So I think it's an, an important development that we now have both parties thinking and talking about this issue, and, and it's part of the broader um, hope that this does become, as was just asked a moment ago, something that we recognize is a key source of insecurity for modern American families. And, and um, so I welcome more ideas. I hope this becomes a competition of ideas where everybody's taking uh, their views and applying it to the problem, because I think that's where the solution is going to come from. Yes, ma'am. I'm actually going to take questions about other topics, uh, perhaps in the hall after this. But we're going to focus on the paid family leave uh, at this uh, at this point. Yeah, we just want to make sure we get everybody's question, and then obviously you guys will chase us down 
<laughs> and we'll run as fast as we can. And you'll, if you, you can yeah. catch us, we get your answer. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, we've tried. You know, I mean, they're obviously uh, wedded pretty strongly to either the tax increase proposal or a mandate or a combination of both. And um, right now, that's deeply problematic. We can't pass that, number one. I think it would actually be counterproductive. I think the mandate could have the unintended consequence of encouraging businesses not to hire people who might use the benefit. And the tax increase is a payroll tax increase, which is the primary and, in many cases, the sole federal tax liability of the very people we're trying to help. So uh, those approaches don't work for us. Um, so we hope that, uh, obviously, that uh, at some point that there'll be a, a, a meeting of the minds on, from both parties, because that that's what it'll take to turn this into law. But uh, I think uh, what's important is that everyone, more and more people are talking about it. And I would say, as Republicans, we have an obligation to get our whole, own house in order. I mean, this is still not widely accepted in some of the uh, circles that uh, we come from because it's a new issue. And so it will we'll, it'll take some work to get more and more of our colleagues on board with the, the concept that government should have any role to play in this regard. And, and my only observation, it may not be shared by everybody up here, it's just an observation I made the other day, and that is about 15 years ago, there was an effort in the Republican Party to take your Social Security benefits and have an opportunity to invest it in the stock market, to manage your own investment. It's your money, it was the argument. And I, I find it, um, obviously that didn't happen and we've moved on, but I find it sort of ironic that you would not, you would, someone would support taking that money and investing in the stock market, which may or may not be a good idea, but not being able to invest in your children, uh, which is perhaps the, the, the most meaningful thing you could do for our country and its future. So um, we're hoping that well, we can continue to work to uh, uh, preach the gospel of paid family leave uh, within our own party and, and sort of reframe the orthodoxy that has dominated this issue. And uh, we're making real progress as evidenced by three potential bills and numerous members of the House and Senate working on it from the Republican side. Let me just also note in that, in that regard that... Do you want to do the mic so they can... Oh, I don't think they need to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a surprise that our, our Democrat friends would say, look, let's increase the tax instead. Um, and uh, we're much more inclined to say, no, we don't want to add an additional burden to working families, and we don't want to increase the tax. And they say, well, but you could just take a little bit of money every, uh, every year for the rest of someone's life while you could pay for this benefit. And my thought is, well, you know, how about letting those people take that little bit of extra money and either pay for their own uh, expenses, or perhaps if they want to invest, as, as uh, Senator Rubio said, they want to invest in the stock market with that little extra money every month, they'll be a lot better off having invested that little extra money every month in the stock market than having invested it into, into Social Security. And so this allows people to maintain their own resources to have the option to pull forward uh, Social Security benefits at a time when they need them uh, quite significantly and have the flexibility to then make their own decisions about how they invest in their future. It also is, is um, not only is it voluntary, it is specific to the individual, to the, that new mom and dad. This does not uh, in any way affect any other person or individual out there. Maybe there's someone that doesn't choose to have children. This doesn't affect uh, their, their benefits. Uh, employers that, that, uh, that can't afford uh, to offer doesn't, doesn't affect uh, uh, their, their work. So the flexibility here and the fact that it is tied to your individual uh, benefit, I think, is key. In terms of, of co-sponsorships, um, obviously, uh, many of the uh, proposals that are in the in the House that have been offered uh, do raise payroll taxes uh, and are non-starters uh, for me and for many others. However, I have had some luck with some of the new incoming Democrat freshmen in interest, so that's where uh, some of that comes from. So, we've got time for one more, guys. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jackie from Cox Media. How much time would you want? We actually had four, and uh, so, um, and, and we had the ability at that time. Uh, my wife uh, wasn't working outside the home, and so we, for us, it was an enormous benefit. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, it's, it's, it depends on individual circumstances. I would imagine most parents would want as much time as they could get, but right now, for them, the time is zero, uh, at least not without losing a paycheck, and most can't afford it. And I think the one thing that brought me to this issue is actually knowing people, and, and I think Congressman Crenshaw mentioned that as part of a generational situation when you when you actually know people that have had to make this choice and see the the agonizing uh, limited options they have before them today 
it compels you to understand that we have a social insecurity cause in our 21st century. Social security was, was created at a time when the primary insecurity was when people retired, there was nothing there to help them, and you had large numbers of senior citizens living in abject poverty. And that remains something we were concerned about. Uh, but there's an additional insecurity that exists today that perhaps did not exist 50, 60, 80 years ago, and that is young families who at the birth of a child are left with an option of either not having a child at all or facing having to take on debt and, and or going on public assistance as a result of this. So, um, as I said, I mean, every, everybody will make a decision about what the right frame of mind. This is not designed to make the world perfect. It's designed to make the world better than it is today for, for millions of Americans who are having to make that very difficult choice right now. I, with my first child, as someone who's uh, actually had three children, uh, two of them in my 20s, uh, I, I worked for an employer that uh, offered uh, some amount of, of paid family leave. I was able to take six weeks uh, off with my, um, with my son. Uh, it, the next child, I was not employed. I, or, pardon me, I did not have an employer that, that had the, the leave, and I, I took about a month and then went back to work. What I would have loved was for my husband to have been able to take some time off. Um, you know, this, was, this was years ago, back in the late 80s, early 90s, and uh, it would have been wonderful for my husband, Ray, to have been able to take a month or two months, and we could have tag-teamed it somewhat, and he could have shared in some of those experiences. This is what's wonderful about the flexibility of it. I would have taken maybe that last month, and I've, uh, I would have gone on a part-time basis and worked something out with my employer. If, um, uh, there, the maximum flexibility is what's key, and the fact that it is usable and transferable uh, between both parents is, I think, just exceptional. So. Thank you guys for covering this. Appreciate it Thank very, you. very much. Thanks, man. Thanks, Dan. Good to see you. Thank you. Saturday. <laughs>